Video captioning, like many other applications before deep learning, was done using something called as SVOP, that is subject, object, and verb uh, classifiers. The templates used to, the models used to learn the object, action, and scene classifiers, and then generate a sentence. These sentences weren't accurate enough. Since the introduction of deep learning, this has been revolutionized and changed a lot. But there are a few limitations to using video captioning using deep learning as well. Since the introduction of deep learning, the computer vision field has revolutionized a lot. However, tasks like image and video captioning still remain a challenge and have captured an immense attention from literature in the past several years. The nature of a video stream with high temporal dependencies, multiple scenes in a complex video, and diverse kinds of objects and actions make captioning very tough. Yet despite these factors, many architectures and methods have been proposed which substantially push forward research in video description. Building upon those successes, this thesis work develops proposes an architecture which can automatically generate caption for videos. So as we can see in the two figures, uh, one is an image, the other one is a video. So image description is still easier as we can just recognize all, we just have to learn about one frame. A video description is tougher because a video is uh, as many frames of images so we used we need to remember the previous frames to determine what is the action which is taking place which should be described by the system recognition and description of images and videos is a fundamental challenge of computer vision but dramatic progress has been achieved by supervised convolutional neural networks, CNN models on image recognition tasks, and a number of extensions to process videos have been recently proposed. Ideally, a video model should allow processing of variable length input sequences and also provide for variable length outputs as well, including generation of full length sentence descriptions that go beyond conventional one versus all prediction tasks. In this project, we use a long-term recurrent convolutional networks LRCNs, a class of architectures for visual recognition and description which combines convolutional layers and long-range temporal recursion and is end-to-end -end trainable. So this is the basic architecture of the system where a video has been given as an input to the CNN which takes the video frame by frame and extract feature, extracts features from it and gives it to the LSTM which does sequential learning and gives the output which is a sentence which describes the video. Further expanding on the architecture, we can see that there are raw frames of videos which are being fed to the CNN which gives the output features to the LSTMs which in turn gives us a description of the video. The CNN can be used for RGB frames or optical flow images and the system has been implemented on both and both of them give varied results on different data sets. Um, as we can see in this figure that a person is talking on the phone, that video has been fed to the CNN. The CNN extracts the features and gives it to the LSTM. The first part of uh, the process is encoding the features are encoded and then the second part is decoding the features to a sentence the the video is decoded and the description is given that is a man is talking so data sets usually contains pair of video clip and the corresponding ground truth sentences that is what is the actual description of the video the dataset size, properties, and volume attributes of the dataset have been summarized in the next slide. The MSVD dataset contains around 1970 YouTube snippets collected on Amazon Mechanical Turk 
by requesting employers to pick short clips depicting a single activity. There are roughly 40 available English captions per video and the standard split of MSVD dataset is 1200 videos for training, 100 for validation and 670 for testing. MSVD tried to collect videos that would be understood regardless of an author's linguistic or cultural background. Duration of each clip is around 10 seconds. So here is the description of one of the videos. BOS indicates beginning of sentence, EOS indicates end of sentence. So there can be many description for the same videos as many people can describe it with different different ways. So hence the data set tries to cover all possible captions for one video. And here is the continuation of the same data set from the previous slide. Let's see the basic design consideration of the system. The data set is divided into two sets that is training data set and testing data set. The training data set is trained and then fed to the LRCN whereas the uncaptioned data set is used for testing which is fed to the system later and checks how accurate does the system give an output for that video. The user can also upload any video to this model and get an output caption for the video. It is also beneficial for visually impaired users because of audio conversion they can watch the movies or clips and understand what's happening in the clips without having vision. Talking about code execution, the system is pre-trained using the MSVD dataset. The extraction of features for the different videos in the dataset and the testing of these videos is done by the system. We have implemented a GUI to make it easy for the users to upload videos and test the caption for those videos. Let's go ahead and see the execution of the code. So now we start the Django server by the terminal. We type python manage.py run server and we press enter. So this will start the Django server. It first checks for error if there is any error in the code. And uh, it takes some time so I'll just skip to the part where it has uh, finished executing and it has started. Now as you can see the Django server is on and it started on the local host. We'll uh, open the local host. It opened in a browser. So this is the UI of the code. And as you can see there are a few videos with captions. Uh, these are the videos which I tried already. So mm, we can see the dashboard. We can see an upload option where we can go and upload the videos. Upload new videos. So now we'll go to upload. Now, so this we can uh, upload the local files. So we already have a testing data set uh, of YouTube clips, which we'll use. We'll click on browse. So now this is the data set. It's a testing data set. So we can just pick any video at random. So we'll pick, let's say this or this video. Okay, let's, so now we'll click on submit and the video will okay I didn't, uh, yeah so now the video has started uploading now we it, uh, redirect to the dashboard it says processing because the processing is going on in the back end we can see that on the terminal so we move to the terminal here we can see the shape of frame so this describes the frames of the video and we take only 80 frames so if the frames are not exactly uh, 80 then we append extra frames as well and now we are uh, capturing 16 features at a time and uh, the execution is done and now we can now we'll refresh this page and we can see the caption here now let's click on view video and see if the caption is accurate and we'll click on view video and we will play this video we can see the caption here as well a man and woman are playing a board game Okay, so the caption is accurate. They are actually playing a board game. So it was 100% right. Okay, so now we'll try another video. We'll go back to upload. We'll select a video at random again. 
so now let's select this video and submit so now the video is being uploaded and it will redirect us to the dashboard once the video is done uploading that means the testing has started uh, now we can see it's being processed we'll move back to the terminal to see the execution in the back end so now as we can see the same thing again shape of frame captured 80 frames and then it will start appending features as you can see the shape of frames is different for this video it has 90 frames it's it has started appending features i'll just fast forward this part because it takes some time it takes around two minutes for small videos and now we can okay now the caption is ready so we refresh this page and now we can see a boy is talking now we'll click on view video to see what the cat video is we'll play the video so the boy is talking or i guess shouting as well so a boy is talking is accurate but is not 100 percent accurate so it's still like 80 percent accurate now we'll try another video we'll go to up we'll upload a new video let's upload another video at random we'll go to now uh, we'll select this video okay submit okay so now we'll move back to the dashboard we can see it's processing we'll see the terminal again to see the execution of the back end and as we can see the shape of frames is 120 this time it captured 80 frames out of it appended 16 features it will append keep on appending 16 features it's extracting the features basically and now after the extract i'll just fast forward this part as well so now it has created with now we can refresh this page and we can see the caption so after refreshing a woman is slicing a potato we'll click on view video and when we play the video let's see what it is about if she's actually slicing a potato if it was accurate so this is the ui of the system for testing and extracting feature let's talk about the uh, evaluation of the system on different data sets so the youtube data set that is the msvd data set which was used for training gives a very high meteor score the higher the meteor score the better the system is so we get a 29.8 meteor score on using a system with rgb plus flow optical images when we only use rgb images we get 29.2 percent meteor score when we use a randomized uh, that is either rgb or flow we get 28.2 percentage meteor score that means a system is better when it is assigned a specific type of optical image and when compared to other systems like a mean pool system uh, which uses vgg frames uh, which has a meteor percentage of 27.7 so we have significantly improved the meteor score from mean pool to S2VT by 2.1%. So these two data sets that is MP2MD and MVAD are mm, captions of various movies. These data sets are used for testing purposes to see how good the system works for videos which have not been used for training purposes. As we can see from the graph for MP2 MD data set, we get a meteor percentage of 7.1 using RGB frames, which is a significant improvement from the previous works. Also for MVAD data set, the meteor score is 6.7%, which is also a very good improvement from the past scores achieved by different systems. In contrast to related work, we construct descriptions using a sequence to sequence model where frames are first read sequentially and then words are generated sequentially. This allows us to handle variable length input and output while simultaneously modeling temporal structure. Our model achieves state of the art performance on the MSVD dataset. 
and outperforms related work on two large and challenging movie description data sets. Despite its conceptual simplicity, a model significantly benefits from additional data, suggesting that it has a high model capacity and is able to learn complex temporal structure in the input and output sequences for challenging movie description datasets. As the field of computer vision matures beyond tasks with static input and prediction, deep sequence modeling tools like LRCN are increasingly central to the vision systems for problems with sequential structure. The ease with which these tools can be incorporated into existing visual recognition pipelines make them a natural choice for perceptual problems with time varying visual input or sequential outputs which these methods are able to handle with little input pre-processing and no hand design features. Talking about the future work possible on the system, we can uh, further optimize the system by training the model on more data sets besides MSVD. And also we can make an interface for blind users where they can get audio instructions to caption videos and which will play the audio file automatically for them. Thank you.